Hey there, Pilates lovers. It's Carmen Lantain, your host here on Chatter from the Center, a Pilates podcast where we get to practice who we are beyond our reformer. Today, my guest is a friend and teacher of mine, Lori Coleman Brown. Lori is currently in Seattle and teaching at Teresa Shoup's Studio Atlas Pilates. It was in 2018 that I met Lori for the first time. Steph Davis of 360 Brain Body in Calgary, Alberta, hosted Lori and the dynamic duo of Pilatesology, you might know them, Jack and Elisa Wyatt. I knew of Lori from other colleagues of mine and that she also had a connection with another Ramana student and a teacher of mine who I had at Brooke Seiler's Rehab Studio in New York City. Her name is Carrie Regan. Fast forward today, and Lori has been one of my mainstay teachers and a friend who I am truly grateful to work with on a regular basis. Lori has a long history as a student of Ramana's and also years of experience as a representative for Ramana's Pilates with her then business partner, Lauren Steffen, who currently still has the studio and it's called Pilates Seattle International and Physical Therapy. In our chat together, I learn about some interesting touch points in Lori's journey and it's the juicy developments in between these touch points that deal with success, loss, and reconciliation within her own faith in Pilates that has made Lori into one of the most genuine and real personas today in our industry. Join me now as I chat with Lori and we find out who she is both on and off the reformer. All right, welcome. It's Carmen Lantain. I'm here on Chatter from the Center, a Pilates podcast. And today I wish you could see her, but she is shiny and bright and brilliant. The Lori Coleman Brown is my guest. Welcome, Hi, Carmen. Lori. Hi, Thank pal. you for having me. Yes, you are my fourth guest on Chatter from the Center. And um, why I wanted to do these podcasts. Um, well, really, I just wanted to get to know the people who were people that I admire and people that do teach me and people that I train with and my colleagues and get to know a little bit about what makes them tick or what's in their wheelhouse nowadays, mm -hmm. both on the reformer and off the reformer and how Pilates has, you know, for myself. Pilates changes in my body, but it also helps me to change who I am as I grow deeper in my practice. Mm -hmm. So that's why I wanted to, you know, and, and I, I, I only like talking with people I like. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and uh, you and I have a good time. We do chin wag a lot, but we do get serious business when you're training me. And, mm -hmm. and so there's a nice balance there. Sneak it in. Sneak it in. I'm wondering to set the tone a little. Um, there are other interviews with Lori, which I'll put in the show notes at the at the bottom. I know Victoria from the Pilates Snob did a wonderful mat and chat. And she has the whole transcript and the video on her website. So if you want to catch up on some of uh, Lori's earlier times, and if we don't get to those no, you can find out some background about Lori on that. But let's take our listeners back to when Lori Coleman, well, we, were you not, you weren't even married. Were you just the Brown or the Coleman? The or Coleman. What were you? The Coleman. It was the Coleman. <laughs> there was no Brown in the Coleman. So when Lori Coleman was a young little gaffer back in her days, you know, where'd you grow up? Just a quick synopsis. How did you come about to Pilates? And let's go from there. Because some people don't even know who you are, which, right. which I don't understand that. How could they not know? 
I was born, I'm from the Northeast. So I was born in Rhode Island and I grew up until I was 16 in Connecticut. And then my parents, my father's job moved to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. So I wound up learning all about the Civil War and getting in trouble on the battlefield and being 16 and learning how to enjoy a kegger. On the battlefield. <laughs> yeah, because I went from ballet mm -hmm. And then in Pennsylvania, there wasn't really ballet. There was the cornfield and the parties. Wow. <laughs> so I had a couple of years of learning about that. And, mm -hmm. and then I went to school in Philadelphia and New York and learned about Pilates from an in, a dance injury. Mm. Many of us found Pilates in that way. I hurt my knee dancing with this break dancer who could do all these crazy moves. And I was trying to do something like that. And I cracked my knee, um, like hyperextended it. So my dance do you, teachers. Do you, remember, do you remember what hip hop or break dance move it was? was I remember exactly. What was it? It was, it was, I don't know what it was called, but I was with Doug Elkins, who was a, dance friend of mine and I did this jump back to the left and I landed my sneaker on a carpet and my sneaker stuck and my knee kept going God. and so I was doing kind of like a backwards twisted leap oh wow whatever wow. that was yeah and um and you know Doug could fold and roll and pop back up <laughs> <laughs> and I just was like, ah, this is it. So my dance teachers told me, don't go to the doctor, go to Pilates. And that's how, and at, in those days, you no, know, Pilates was this random weird thing. And there's only one place to go. And that was Ramana in New York. So that's how I started my Pilates journey. So it wasn't when you were at SU. NY or SUNY and it was with Steve Gordano or in in at Purchase yeah or? yeah at all this Purchase. happened at Purchase okay this yeah. this meeting of and dancing with Doug Elkins this okay. crazy leap yeah this thing all happened at Purchase SUNY Purchase State oh. University of New York mm, yeah. Purchase okay. and um Steve Giordano mm -hmm was I think he was already going he already knew Ramana okay so when I when I was told go to Ramana Steve is the person who told me that's where you go that's who right. it is right that's the address and all of that and um also at purchase there was the room with all the apparatus which was not being used it was being all the apparatus was pushed in the corner and the room was being used for storage so we do you remember what um equipment it was Lori oh yeah I remember was exactly it grots or was it totally some... it was all grots there okay. was a guillotine that was oh that, wow um, it was a fully outfitted studio um two reformers oh, okay studio was this then like why that, was it pushed to the side yeah it was um Jacques D'Amboise this famous dancer was mm -hmm. I think he was the dean at one point at Purchase or he taught there or he was fully involved at Purchase and he brought Ramana and Pilates to Purchase years earlier and then at some point the studio closed and the apparatus just got pushed away wow, wow. so it was just sitting there so actually my dance teacher she said you should do Pilates and she brought me downstairs and we unlocked the door and I looked in there so my introduction was the apparatus oh that's amazing and the room before I even went to New York to meet Ramana and I just remember the fluffies the Cadillac the fluffies and the chain 
and I was a really young dancer and I was like this this is the weirdest thing I ever I've ever seen I I have yeah I don't know but I trusted her so I went to New York and I got some training and um and then Steve Giordano was very entrepreneurial and he opened the studio and I was like his little helper bringing the teacher Phoebe Higgins to the studio to teach us but the cool thing in that whole story is I got a key to the studio really early before I knew anything yeah and it was like a haven like Mm. you're saying um the reformer and your and being on the reformer and it changes your life and there's kind of a touchstone every time you return to your reformer at home when you visit your friends in every crazy country and what's there the reformer is there it's like home away from home and a continuous touchstone that 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 it sounds like you and I we can reflect on everything that has happened between each time we touch our reformer and we come back to the work, back to the studio. It's just an amazing container for, that I never in a million years thought would be this kind of a a strong center. I always thought Pilates was this weird thing and I was gonna do it and I, I kept trying to get away, you know. You know, it's so interesting because like if you talk to people who come into my studio and maybe you have this experience, you know, clients, their first experience or students, even students becoming teachers. Oh, I did a math class at a community center like that was their first touchstone. And Uh I'm not sure if that would grab a person as much as what Because it didn't grab me, Lori. I didn't have what you had, that experience. I was doing mat and mat and mat. And then someone said, oh, you should go to a studio. And I was like, what? There's equipment. And then I was addicted. But you you had a wonderful experience. Like, Yeah, and I also had all this freedom because I I went to take my lesson and I learned. And then I came back to purchase and I opened the key, the studio, and I tried to do everything I learned. And I'm sure I, I did everything wrong. But then when I went back for another lesson, I was much more like, oh, there's two springs mm-hmm. on the short spine. There's not mm-hmm. four springs. Right. And, <laughs> and so your teacher was Phoebe Higgins. Phoebe Higgins Phoebe. was like my my nice teacher the the person that didn't freak me out okay so she was the per she was like my I could hear her and listen to her and I felt like I could and Ramana was my teacher that was like she made an impression and like any little thing she said I still hear today she was like like the big teacher with a capital T yeah I can totally relate J J for me is that teacher and then I have the nice teachers you and Sandy and Karen and Ken Crash and Daniela I can totally relate yeah and now okay go ahead my um big T teacher is now gone yeah so I'm I'm finding things for myself I I'm she's still there Mm -hmm. but I'm left with creating and recreating and I'm on my own in a in a really good way after the years of being her student and also a representative right this is what Ramana says this is what Ramana wants this is how you do it this is how it's done Mm -hmm. and now I have I'm in a different space with my big T teacher right before we get to the um, teacher within you let's just get some um, 
context as to you went, you were certified, or did you actually get a certification with Ramana? No. No. <laughs> but then, so you went... <laughs> Geez, it sounds like you were just making up stuff here. So you got the No, key. I went to my lessons and I was really learning. And I yeah. also, Steve was also going and then he would come back and share what he wow. learned. I so I was very much learning. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would be watching Ramana in New York to the point where she kind of was like, Who's well, this kid following who me? You, you've been around here, honey. Yeah. Go stretch that man. And I was like, oh my God, I'm a teacher. Yeah, right. That was oh. kind of like my acknowledgement yeah. to be a teacher. And so I was, I was eventually, I eventually did receive a certificate in the mail um, years later. But I went, I hosted Ramana. She came to my studio for 10 days at a time for more than once a year. Um, so we, I got tons of training, tons right. of training. So this studio you're speaking about, we're no longer in New York. Now you and is it still Lori Coleman or is it Lori Coleman Brown who's come to Seattle? It's Lori Coleman that has okay. come to Seattle. Seattle. Okay, so now we're in Seattle. Yes. And you were in a partnership with... Um, yes, Lauren, Lauren Steffen. Right. She and lived here and right. I lived there. And um, so, so how did I'm, that partnership come about? That was through our mutual friend, Sean Gallagher. I see. Okay. And um, so we opened a business in Seattle in... 1993 I believe okay now so the studio because there's there was a transition on the name first it was called um I I don't have my notes but then oh, my my studio days, yeah remember with the oh lawsuit, yes then you decided to drop something and make and call it something else right well originally it was called the Pilates and Physical Therapy Center of Seattle. That's right. That's a mouthful. <laughs> yeah. Where do so, you go take lessons? Well, I take it. <laughs> so we weren't, you know, business. No, it wasn't it the Pirate Studio of Seattle? Oh, yes. Our first checkbook. Right. We opened our bank account at Bank of America. Mm. And we filled out all the forms and we got our first checkbook. And instead of an L... P-I-L-A-T-E-S. They spelled it P-I-R-A-T-E-S. Right. And we looked right. at it and it's the, the Pirate Studio of Seattle. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's fun. That was one of our um, doing business as. So we had this long, ridiculous name that we really couldn't use because it was too much of a mouthful. Mm -hmm. We had Capitol Hill Physical Therapy. Because at this point, I had also gone through through physical therapy school and we had the Pilates studio of Seattle and those were our two working names right for a, well, quite a while so did you feel that Pilates up until this point because you you went back and you got your master's and, as a uh, physiotherapist in physical therapy so was Pilates just a hobby for you that you did to make some money to help go through school? Like, where was your mind in all of this? Yeah, Pilates was just always kind of there for me. I was, if I had a summer break or winter break, almost like the key to the studio, it was such, mm. such a gravitational pull. Like, where are you gonna go? I don't know, I'm gonna go to Pilates. Yeah. What are you gonna do? I don't know. I think I'll go do some Pilates. Right. I'm gonna gonna watch Pilates. I'm gonna do Pilates. What are you doing? Hey, what are you doing? I don't know. Let's go do some Pilates. <laughs> Just well, I look at my circle of friends, and and in some way or another, there's a touch point of Pilates. It just is. Yeah, it's like it's gravity. Mm, mm. Um, 
So you went through this with Lauren Steffen. Now this studio was for 12 years or 13? How long? No, a little bit longer. It? it was like 16. Uh, I see. Okay. And now Lauren still owns and runs that studio in Seattle. Okay. okay. So when um, you were leaving that studio, yeah. um, as a partner, did you leave on good terms? I thought I did. Okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we, you know, we were together. We did, we got together in this, Pilates is this little weird thing. Mm -hmm. We never had a business plan. Mm. Um, we hosted Ramana. We got really big. Yeah. We, we quadrupled our space all at once. Mm -hmm. We had people coming from all around the world, mm. from New Zealand and from Japan and from everywhere, from Europe. And so the studio really got big and bigger than we had, I ever thought it would and, or planned for. And at our biggest, we had 30 apprentices, 20 wow. teachers, wow, um, three or five, I'm forgetting now, at least three front desk people, a lawyer, a manager, and a bookkeeper. Wow. wow. So we got really big. And then Lauren and I, our vision in to me, I, I wanted to like, whew, kind of mm. not get bigger. And she was more of an expansion mode. And I was more of a yeah. maintaining or like, yeah. Yeah. um, yeah. smaller so, mode. You each had a vision. Yes. And as the, the little nest egg grew and rolled into a big snowball, you needed to get out of its way. Hey, Lori, would you feel? Kind of. And then, then it was like really snowballing along. Yeah. And then we had, um, then Pilates really became a thing. Suddenly we weren't the only Pilates studio. Suddenly there was um, competition and the name Pilates with the lawsuit became mm -hmm. generic mm -hmm. or everyone can use it. And so, you know, the rules sort of morphed in the in there and so that's what was going on you want to share a little bit about how you were involved with the lawsuit at all or what your role was that you were called to come talk or or is that just something we leave in the past I kind of leave it in the past like I just I had these boxes mm -hmm. recently and I went through the boxes and I found my deposition. I was deposed for this oh. lawsuit, you know, and I kept it for a long time. And I finally, I just put it all through the shredder. Yeah. I'm just like, I don't, the history of how, like, I'm so blessed that I got to be kind of in the front row to this rise of Pilates. Mm -hmm. We had a front seat view of it all. And, mm -hmm. and um, you know, how the world works and how relationships are made and how things grow and then contract and how people mm -hmm. get along or don't get along. And it's just really, really fascinating. And, but at the end of the day, I just like, to do the footwork and then watch how this client mm -hmm. veers to the left and that client you know sticks their little finger out and this you know mm -hmm. this person's head is I just that's really what fascinates me is so would you say Lori that um because I think People who will be listening to this, they have gone into business with people. They have created relationships. And then we have things like social media or things change in the world. And we start to see different colors of people's thinking. Mm -hmm. And so at this point, it sounds like you were going in a different direction. 
and you joined up with now Teresa at Atlas Pilates. Mm -hmm. And we've also talked in the past, and, and I'm just bringing this up to help build some context here, but, and, and for those that don't know, Lori has, has been a teacher of mine for a few years now, and, and I really came to Lori as 12-step recovery <laughs> in terms of, like, we, had, we have spoke, I have spoken honestly about this, you know, crisis in face of Pilates in yes. my body. Yes. When did that happen for you, if you could talk about that? Because you kind of helped me even, I, I came to you, I was almost in tears. I think I cried in front of you, but you helped me form some language about what was going on with me. You actually related your own crisis of faith in mm -hmm. maybe your teacher or Pilates or in your body or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. can, we, can we talk about that a little bit? Yes, I use that term crisis in faith. Yeah. I, I um, help a lot of people through that. And I think it relates back to my big T teacher. And also I, I took a lot of lessons in my life. I took ice skating lessons, I took ballet lessons and I took Pilates lessons. And so I did things correctly and what I learned along the way is that if I put a lot of energy into doing things correctly, I expected a res certain result. In you or from your teacher acknowledging you? No, from me. Okay. And I found that I had a pain, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and and that I, kind of I think of a lot of words, but I'm gonna yeah. say pain. Yeah. And I I also discovered, okay, so there's a certain shape that the back is supposed to make mm -hmm. and when I made that shape it didn't feel good mm -hmm. like to be really basic I have all these like fancy stories and various ways of getting to that point but if I want to hit the nail on the head that's what I'm going to say and these shapes were in your mind from what your big T teacher Share, has shared shared yes but I'm also gonna say that whenever I worked out with Ramana mm. I felt amazing yeah my body felt really exactly. good interesting. so what is it that is from that yes. situation to now you're gonna go and try and replicate because I do that too I have a lot yes. I feel amazing with you I go and replicate it and Lo and behold, I'm back to this. Yes. What is that about? So, so this is like a whole thing, Carmen, but I'll just try to <laughs> cut to the chase here. Okay. Another one of my stories, well, it wasn't only, okay, so I have two things. Mm -hmm. One of the things is that I discovered that it was energy. Like when I, so I'm walking along the street and the Pilates studio is on 57th street and I'm walking. I touch 57th street. My back hurts. I take my foot off 57th street. My back doesn't hurt. Mm -hmm. so oh my gosh. Just the anticipation mm -hmm. of this environment. Mm -hmm. And this is like way later. This is, this is not um, in my, you know, in my, dis this is after I'm a business owner, after I'm, after other people, I'm supposed to be a representative of Ramana. I'm supposed to do things and look a certain way. If I walk into the studio and I'm me, who Ramana always let me be me. Mm -hmm. Like she would say, you have a sway in your back. 
and then we would go to do the short um the semicircle she would come over there's there's literally 50 people on 50 reformers in new jersey she comes over to me and she pushes my butt my knees and my butt down into the well into the biggest back bend and i'm like delight my body feels delighted so it's almost like she taught me and felt me and it didn't it was not the same thing as what she told me and showed me Mm. so when she became when she was a teacher trainer and she was telling everybody this is how you're supposed to do it you're supposed to scoop your belly and have a round back Mm. and yet when she taught I had the opportunity to work with her before all the people right so she taught my roommates and my friends and my crazy stockbroker friend with the broken hip and and me in just my back bendy nature and she took me there and it felt fantastic mm. so i think the that the problem and this is great because i'm kind of discovering it in my as we speak which i love it was working out with her people doing the things that i think i was supposed to be doing and what they thought that we were all supposed to be doing and trying to put the, all the supposed to in my bodies that did not agree. That hurt. So when I was on 57th street and I'm about to walk into this environment of shoulds and scoops Mm -hmm. where I would literally sit on the mat and um, do spine stretch forward and have 10 apprentices run over and start pushing my body into a round. Right. Because they, what was it? They wanted to show. Right. Now probably Shari is in charge, Ramana's daughter. Um, They wanted to show, I see a back that's not round. They weren't like looking at me and, and my life force and my shape and anyway I discovered it was energy it wasn't necessarily the the only the shape it was also the energy of the shape right so I hope that's That's incredible no that is that's what you're looking for (laughs) there's no wrong answers here (laughs) I mean you you just took me to an experience that I had with um I'm thinking of the two sisters I trained with in Boulder, Amy Elkers Rachel. Mm-hmm. and Rachel. And Amy was doing this workshop and she was like, I, at this point, I totally did not understand because I was looking for shapes. I was looking for rule and content that I could intellectually relate to. And she was talking at looking at the flesh, the color of the flesh, the energy. And I was like, this is wackadoodle. But now we speak about it now and I totally am that teacher that does know when a person's coming in the room you know we talk about joe watching a person take their shoes off i do sense this tension i do see in the skin you know these are things that are coming to light but in the past i was always trained to teach the body in front of me but i didn't know what that meant right i'm teaching for shape how many times have you stopped me and said what do you or you'll say to me hey carm what are you looking for when i'm looking in the mirror (laughs) when i'm training what what are you looking for in the mirror what what is that about yeah 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 or when when you go to a certain distance and then there's a change yeah and then you keep going like what well, we, we've it's, called that cartooning in the body or the glitching. It might yeah. glitch. What's happening so cool. right there? What is happening right there? Mm-hmm. So we talk about this energy. You said it was twofold. Is there something specific as, as well as that energy that caused you to have a crisis of, in this faith of Pilates? A crisis of faith. Or did you just find it and you said, screw this. I know now how to make my way back. I started 
to realize, I started to realize that I need to stand for me. Yes. Yeah. And no one like really cares, you know? Yeah. And I started to do, I started to feel my way Mm. and starting to do, now this is Pat, this is post Ramana. Yeah. So is this now your time when you went to work for Teresa? Or yes. after you guys kind yeah. of stopped the being a teacher training facility for yeah. Ramana. Okay. Yeah. When I dis I distanced, I I so left. Did you, did you get kicked out, kicked out literally of the no. club? Or? I resigned. Oh, you resigned. Yeah, I wrote a letter and I resigned. Oh, that and what we did? Okay. That's that what I did. Okay. Um, so one thing is I I didn't want to own a business. I didn't want to be in partnership anymore. Mm-hmm. And um, so that was one thing. And then the other thing was I was still a representative of an organization, Ramana's Pilates, which Ramana was not part of anymore. And um, that my vision once Romana wasn't there, you know, the new top people, I just found that I was going, I was going to lose Romana's voice if I listened to new voices. I see. And it just felt wrong. Like, oh, oh, no, I'm not. Like, for instance, one of the things, um, that the new leader wanted to do was, um, you know, in the arm circles mm-hmm. uh, on the reformer, she didn't want to give the reverse arm circles to women. Oh, I see. She wanted to say the women don't do the reverse of the arm circles or the shaving or so it was something like that. Okay. And you know, I can see like someone's trying to steer a big ship. So Mm. you can make a rule and of course rules can be breakable or whatever, but it really bothered me to, and I even said something and I raised my hand and I was like, well, women need to be able to lift their arms too. Right. And and put the bobby pins in their hair. You know, I stood up and and I was, and I did it in public. I didn't, I don't know. I was kind of already done, actually. That was kind of the last. That Did you get there. reprimanded for that? I got actually offered something on a silver platter. I got offered something bigger. Okay, let's hear it. And I turned and a lot. I was drinking wine when this offer came, and the wine just popped out and said no my it just was like not for me I'm I'm really I was really clear that I I I was being pulled out of myself Mm. physically by Mm. like when I touch my toe on 57th street and my back hurts I I feel like my my body my my energy got like pulled off center in my own internal gravity you lost your own power. Yeah, exactly. That's a very, very common theme that I'm hearing when I talk to a lot of my Pilates friends. And I don't know why, why that is. And I think it's finding our ability to, to find our power back. We don't have to be doormats. I remember you also saying to me, Lori, Carmen, you won't lose your center if you even tried. You have been doing this game for a long time. Yeah. And that really stopped me in my tracks to realize that I do know something and I can practice 
this way maybe if I want to be in pain to perform or to to please or appease or whatever or I can try this thing so you've really helped me to find my own voice my own power because if we're not an advocate for our body who will be it will be turned inside out and we I see that in a lot of teachers even students I even do it to my students for God's sake forgive me students but Jay always says uh, you will become a good teacher when you start to listen to your students yeah <laughs> I only now I'm starting to understand that yeah yeah, that's yeah there's so much there's so much to Joe Pilates system with all the apparatus and all the exercises and maybe we before video and such Ramana like her mission was to create an army of teachers and practitioners mm -hmm. like nobody was I mean there were pockets and I'm learning more and more that there were people that Joe taught who were teaching um, but I never heard of them they were just in small pockets and Ramana's vision was like everyone yeah. doing Pilates so it it started to come out as a more cookie cutter way just to just to hit the masses you know as yeah. much as possible and now we are lucky enough like I am lucky enough that I don't have to do such a thing you know I get to just work inside of people who are already initiated and are already believers and then have an occasional like with COVID kind of changing now I'm in the studio and I get real beginners mm -hmm. and it's so fun mm -hmm. to figure out how to layer it on without you know <laughs> <laughs> making them run yeah it, it does sound like you have a really sweet setup with the support of Teresa and Atlas Pilates and of course, that's how I came to learn about you. You uh, came to Canada with Jack and Elisa from Pilatesology to Steph Davis's 360 mm -hmm. Brain Body um, Studio in Calgary. And um, so you do do your own independent workshops, but mostly mm -hmm. you are the support, the education person at atlas is that right yes so teresa was my employee for mm -hmm. many years and then now i'm her employee and i really like it <laughs> i really <laughs> like it she does my schedule and yeah before covid i did my own um like private scheduling with private clients mm -hmm. but you know i really uh, it, it's real she's really great and um cj her husband they run the studio um and i've done my mini workshops my virtual mini workshops through atlas pilates and but beyond that i do travel and do my own um and do workshops around the world mm -hmm. And that's how I came to Calgary. I know Steffi for many years because um, she trained with us, with Ramana back in the day. So I, I know Steffi for a long time. And then she invited me to Calgary. And that's right. where I met you. That's right. You know, let's talk a little bit more about this workshops because uh, if anyone has taken one of your workshops, or even if we say, oh, have you worked with Lori Coleman Brown, everyone's eyebrows go up because there's something, something, something when Lori Coleman Brown's doing a workshop. <laughs> I know, it, um, in some ways I feel like I'm just teaching Pilates, you know, 
What's, uh, yeah, what's... although it is the, I don't know what it is, Lori, but there's yeah. the attraction rather than promotion in you that brings people around. I had posted on Instagram that I'd be talking with you and a gal named uh, Natalie and or and I think she's out in Dubai. And oh yeah, said, Dubai. I remember yeah, her. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She said she taught me about the soft gaze or uh, make your eyes soft, I believe. And yeah. I'm like, I've heard that. Yeah. Instead of me, I say, what are you staring at? Come back to your body. Wherever. Yeah, where'd you go? Where'd you go? I say, are you shopping at Costco? Where are you? But you have such a lovely way, such a, I want to say it's a very genuine approach to teaching other teachers and students. But at the same time, I know when I need to shut my lips and do the work. You still have that sort of ability to command the audience. And how'd you get that? Did you learn it from Romana? Is that just something when you found certainly, yourself? Or what? Certainly, I learned so many things from Romana. Like one thing comes to mind. Two examples of the same thing where one um woman she had a really really nasal voice and she's from, from texas so she had an accent with a voice that's like this and ramana would just come straight at it like you have a nasal voice and you need to widen your ears can you wiggle your ears and then she pulled her hair back and she wiggled her ears <laughs> Oh my god. Or another one, even funnier. This what woman, did what did the nasally woman do? Did she try talking with Ramana holding her hair and ears wide? You know what? In a way, Ramana could like make Get away fun of her. you and make it objective. I see. Yeah. You see, it's not like you have a nasal voice. What's wrong with you? Yeah you have bad genes or you're stupid or whatever. It was objective. Like you have a nasal voice. And I think that if you widen your, I don't remember if it was her, we, this is a, this is like a coalescence of story. Yeah, no, it's okay. <laughs> but it was stuff like this. Mm -hmm. And she, Ramana could wiggle her ears and she did like to show it off. So she got, the person really interested in an objective way yes i see not like oh no i'm i need to hide and something's wrong with it M more she drew you in like oh so what we were talking about shape earlier when we learn we can learn about the color of skin like you said is it flushed or is it whatever um and we can learn about shape like is my elbow two inches from my rib or whatever and we can also learn about acceleration and deceleration and um endurance and agility and imagination and like we can objectify, we can objectify movement in a million more ways than shape. Well, a million is a lot, but say a lot more ways than shape. So that's what I've really be, been interested in my mini workshops, mm. like gravity and orientation to gravity and bias, meaning, you know, how can you help yourself in gravity so that it's gravity is not plastering you down mm. so we can it's not necessarily magic it's paying attention it's being present to all the things and all the ways like someone bulging their eyes out or clenching a jaw or whatever like all those things are objective that we can learn to pay attention to in another body and we can also learn to pay attention in ourselves yeah, so this other woman had this horse face Ramona said you have a horse face 
And she was someone who really, she wore like fur and she dressed really beautifully and she wore her special makeup and her unitard was just so, her mom was like, you have a horse face. In a way that, again, she captured the imagination. She stopped her in her tracks and she got her then to do things. Closing, close your jaw and your forehead will come down, you know, in a objective kind of way. Oh my gosh. No, I love it because um, we were training last week or two weeks ago with me and we were doing the rowing and you, you said there's something going on. It's almost cartoon like and you know I thought about that afterwards and, and I do video a lot of my training with you or, or I will watch like playbacks and I'm like god damn it she's right I looked like uh, you know when the eyeballs come bulging out something glitched right there but, but what is that about and uh, so it's interesting how these people come into our lives and we, we, we trust you. We trust you. That lady, the horse lady face, trusted Ramana. There's something about that. Do you always, are you that? Well, it's taken time with you and me to tell me that I looked quite cartoon-like at that moment. But do you ever have people that just say, Lori's just not for me? How do you deal with that? Um, I, I guess I'm just not aware of those people. They just go away. Yeah. Yeah. I used to care about that a lot, Lori. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that was from my business perspective. I really wanted to, you know, stake my ground here in my city or whatever mm -hmm. it was. But right now, and I've had talks with, you know, Noor from Jade Pilates, that it's interesting how happy we are as teachers of Pilates when we can find our people. And yeah. I remember talking to you about, it was a bit back in before COVID when the PMA started coming across Instagram and I was having a real FOMO, you know, fear of missing out. Mm -hmm. and and you said something to me and you I said to you hey do you go to the PMA and you're like well no I kind of have found my people and I'm okay uh-huh but but how how long it must have taken you a few years to and it sounds like when that the wine was flowing it was at that point that you sort of said enough you know, I got to step. A, I got to step into my true self, my authentic self. And yeah. I think, as teachers, as and as people who want to share this news about Pilates, showing up as our authentic self. And now we might even think we're in our authentic self. I thought I was five years ago, and I truly wasn't, because people were running from me. But now. <laughs> Because I'm very harsh and I'm very, what are you looking at instead of uh, where are you at? But um, so it's well, it depends of, if you're, depends what your intention is, you know? Yeah. So has Pilates softened you, Lori? Are you becoming a softie or are you just becoming more discerning? I'm just being me. <laughs> I'm letting myself be me. Like there was a time when um, some bigger teachers told me I was too nice. Yeah. You're too nice. I, I, that really struck me. I really, it really hurt me. Yeah. I remember being like, I'm not too nice. See, I can be mean. <laughs> like I'm too nice. Like I'm not going to get results. People aren't going to listen to me. Ah, right. People are going to, I don't know. I, I, I had to fill in the blank because I didn't, 
I didn't ask, well, what do you mean? Or how is that? Why is that a problem? But it was more than one person, I think, more, more than one like fancy person, mm. fancy teacher. And I've, I guess the more I teach, the more I'm like, I don't need to command with fire unless I feel like it. I can bring fire and be like, right. But I don't have to, that's not my only tool. Like I have so many more tools that I can, yeah, you know, I can objectify all like, you know, when you have somebody who moves wild, they're wild. They can, Mm. you can say like, stop being wild or or I could say well in today we're going to work on endurance so you're going to hold a position a little longer than you want to Mm. Mm. you know you know yeah you could stop anytime you want but just for fun you're going to just hold it just one little moment longer than you want to Mm. that sounds like 30 years of experience Lori right there probably well I have I do have a lot of experience you do it's it's just the time and watching a lot of people stepping into what you want to stand for has really evolved you into this amazing teacher that I know you want to be a little bit more low profile but if all the people in the world could have some time spent with Lori Coleman Brown, their Pilates and their world might change. Mm-hmm. Uh, Trey, Fry, Trey Fry, you know him? Oh yeah, love Trey. Yeah, well, he stole my spot, so I'm kind of miffed with him. <laughs> oh yeah, you guys kind of share a spot. That I know, Monday, no, I'm just kidding. Monday spot. All good, all good. He uh, messaged on the um, post today and he said specifically, how does Lori with her ever always brilliant ideas keep motivated what inspires you Lori oh yeah like like tell the people we want to know a million things a million things um always in a state of wonder like I wonder why the sky is blue (laughs) I wonder like yellow is supposed to be between blue no, let's see, it goes blue. Oh, green is green. supposed to be between blue and yellow. And then yellow, what's after yellow? It's uh, orange. the red, orange. Yeah, yeah. orange. And red. I get where you're going, the saturation. Oh, you've, you've played the color game with me. Yeah. <laughs> so how about yellow turning into brown, into turning gray, into gray into blue and what about yellow into cream into blush into pink into red Mm. like Mm. I'm always in I'm just in a state of wonder and then I think well oh if somebody told me this happened with Jay Jay told me pull your stomach in and I've been doing Pilates my whole life so I just kind of reached it out instead and he said good I kind of like you pushed my stomach a little white I did something I did the opposite right Right. so I experiment with opposites yeah if you think you're supposed to do something one way try the opposite if you do the thing in your stomach why can't you do that in your thigh Right. If you do it in your foot, why don't you try it in your hands? Right. If your eyeballs are going back, why not push them forward? Mm -hmm. Like always wondering about how life works in our nature, Mm -hmm. how we are creatures of nature. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just goes on. I could go on and on. For sure. Uh, As a student like talking to you like as someone who's going to with an agenda to come in and do Pilates or you're at home you got your mat 
Do you deal with laziness sometimes? Boredom? I agree. Uh, not really, but I know what you mean. Um, yeah. I have reinvented laziness yeah. into not knowing. Like I've even written, I did a workshop with this where I wrote all, all the teachers. I said, what drives you crazy? Like, oh, the bangers, the lazies, the, the, um, you know, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And then we had another con and we were like, well, what is that? What objectively are you seeing? Oh, well, what does lazy mean? Mm. do they wait for you to move do they are they like what do you mean like really Carmen when you say lazy what do you mean by lazy what well, objectively what do you what I what objectively I'm speaking from myself because I was just having this conversation with a client because they're new and mm -hmm. I said to them yeah, there are some days where I'm just lazy. I don't mm -hmm. feel like getting on my reformer, but once I lay down and I start to move my footwork, then the laziness sort of dissipates. Mm -hmm. And so that could yeah. be that could be like inertia. Yeah, it 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 has to be something that and and honestly through COVID, um I think I, I'm the most laziest practitioner because I've had to sign up for classes to motivate me to get going. And, and I was mm -hmm. curious about that. I'm like, well, A, it's very expensive on my mm -hmm. bank account. And B, why can't I just keep being motivated? It's not that I'm not inspired, Lori, because I'm always excited about Pilates. There's never something, I'm never bored. Mm -hmm. but I might be lazy. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I'm getting at. So, or, so do you like, you have this, do you train all the, like people will ask me, do you train seven days a week? And I've come to a place where I've just stopped reporting, report carding myself saying mm -hmm. that I got my four workouts in and I just start to listen more to my body. I had a really hellish weekend or I had a long work week so I I started to train Pilates or you not use Pilates but do Pilates as it fits with how I'm feeling and that never was the case I used to abuse Pilates to make mm -hmm. my body be something right yeah so where are you at with that in your life yeah I um I hear you. I will, oftentimes I'll just tell myself, just do one exercise at this time. I, I have certain times where I, where I set aside for myself and then I make a mark on the calendar. Mm. So I don't, I used for a long time, I had to sign up with a teacher to show up for that. But yeah. now I can, I have to show up for somebody else to witness me. Ah, and that happened again at the beginning of the pandemic where we were just setting up all these trades, the staff of Atlas Pilates, because we're like, oh, I just, I can't get organized here. I don't, I'm a big mess. So we would say, okay, on this day at this time, we're going to teach each other for a half an hour, yeah. or we're going to, we're just going to show up together and we're going to chat while we do something. So for me, it has to be, I have at this point, I don't need another person to do that. I can just mark. I have to physically put it on my calendar, though. Mm -hmm. Even if it's happening right then, I'm like, oh, I think I'm going to do something. I run over to my calendar and I go like work out and I put it on my calendar. Yeah. <laughs> and then I tell myself, I'm just going to do one exercise until my body. Until stopping is harder than continuing ah, beautiful. like the for the bicycle is a good example for me I lay down I put my hips up on the pillow or whatever I have over here 
I uh, had a spine corrector for a while, but I brought it back. So I put my hips up and then I just start doing like a scissors. And I, and I like like playing with gravity, it's playful. And then I find a rhythm and then it usually goes into the bicycle. And I find this speed that doesn't want to stop. I have to, so that's like my inertia thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is one. Yeah. It's one way. It's amazing as we grow in Pilates, even as I age, and I talked about this with Arlene in my last episode about aging through Pilates, menopause, arthritis, and all these things. Um, but if I just lay down and start something, I then carry on. Yeah. yeah. It's the first it's stopping and getting on the mat is the hardest thing. It is absolutely, absolutely. So signing up with a buddy, even if putting it on on a calendar, is yep. uh, a start of some kind of action. Because we know Pilates will only change through action, and that's practice. That's it. That's it. Like so life. you sign up with a friend. It's like take this the same kind of strategies you hear about for taking a walk like oh you're going to meet your friend yeah at the corner every yeah. saturday at this time and then you you don't really feel like it but you're like oh but carmen's going to be there yeah and we're going to have fun because we because yeah. we always do and then you show up and you you just um doing it with a buddy is a great way and from there i was able to actually do it for myself mm. which is huge because I'm the same I always needed to sign up mm. and it was really hard when I owned my own studio mm. it was even harder because when you're in your space it means so many different things mm -hmm. it's not really your it's not only your space for you it's it's your work you're going to video there you're going to have clients there you're going to yeah wah, 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 wah. right Lori I could go on and on and on but for the sake of the podcast I'm going to wrap it up with a few specific things that I do ask all my guests and first off what is it that you're reading these days that are in that is inspiring you doesn't have to be Pilates but maybe it's something and maybe you're not a reader you're watching something I am actually reading something um well I read I have James uh -oh. Nestor breath book oh that's come up twice with my guests yeah everyone's okay. reading that yeah. it's really yeah. it really is good Okay. And um, Atomic Habits. Oh, I read that. It's fantastic. Okay. Love mm -hmm. that. And that really speaks to like this. Yeah. Yeah. Last exactly. part we just talked mm -hmm. about. And then the book that I'm right now, it's, it's right there. That's why I'm looking over there. Um, I just picked it up. It was at this um, cabin that we were staying in and I just pulled it off the shelf and I love it. It's called Love is the Killer App. Oh. By... Tim Sanders. Okay. Love and is killer app. Love is the killer app. And it's really about, um, to me, it's about being yourself and sharing, mm. sharing, keep sharing is the, is the love and being present. And he talks about it in like a business context, but mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it really is speaking to me. How about you? What are you reading? Um, well, I do have a thing of fiction going on. Um, Kristen Hanna, she writes. The oh. stories. Yes. So I was a real great Sarah, John Steinbeck. Um, I sort of have this fantasy self life that I want a homestead, but it, it's in the city. <laughs> oh, you know me, I love nature and I love camping and mm -hmm. I love being out, 
out in the van life, but I do love my conveniences. Anyway, it's this um, very amazing story. I learned all about the American Dust Bowls and the Great Depression and this movement towards California and how, I mean, we're talking a huge migrant, you know, it wasn't immigrant, it's migrant and, mm -hmm. you know, the isms against the migrants. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I, it's funny from Canada, I guess I could learn about my own country. <laughs> it sounds like the, the damn United States has, has had their uh, tough times. So that's what I'm reading for fiction. And as far as not fiction, I'm reading um, the spiritual, oh, I can't remember the name, but it has to do with sort of like the 12 steps and the spiritual thing about that, because I'll, everything to me is always something of recovery and moving uh -huh. forward, you know, in, in anything. Oh, you know, what I'm also, um, my right before bed book is Carlos Castaneda. I don't know that. What is that? Oh, I'll send you a copy. It's like from the 60s and the oh, 70s. Oh, yes. And I do want to read The Artist's Way because I've heard that that's amazing. Have you read that one? No. That one I have heard is fantastic. Oh, and I did just finish The Hate You Give. Oh, I read that. Fantastic. Love that. Yeah, yeah. Thug Life. Yeah. So I, I, I really am enjoying that. What about for Instagram? Who are you spying and trolling these days? Who's inspiring you? And it doesn't have to be Pilates either. You. Oh, bless you. Um, Alexander De Silva. Oh, yeah. He's wonderful. Yeah. I also spy on him because I teach him. So oh, oh, before his lessons, I go on his Instagram and I, I look and I'm like, you know, what's he posting? Yeah. Oh, you're looking, looking pretty good there. Yeah. yeah that, I love that. It's good. Um, yeah, I try, I do troll on Instagram, but it's kind of mindless. Yeah. It's a I need to, a lot of times I'm just like, trying to stop yeah uh, quite often I will delete the app from my phone like literally uh -huh. off my phone mm -hmm. and it makes it really difficult that I have to then sign in re reload the app when I just realize it's becoming a real sucker yeah. of my time so I will do that if you were to step into the studio or there at your home what are a few exercises that you would do right now that would feel good for you um well like I said always going upside down and doing yeah. leg series something like that always feels good um, um back bends always feel good on mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. like rocking oh yeah I love rocking yeah I love rocking just like for me mm -hmm. Yeah, and exactly. These are what feel good for yeah. you. And sidekicks are kind of feeling good. Side like like oh. the whole like oh yeah, yeah, fish kind yep. of yeah, under arm, under body. Mm -hmm. Sidekicks feel really good. You remember when you taught me the. Um, uh, pressing the pedal on your side one to chair and we were sort of doing a twist with it and we were pretending to be reptiles or something do you remember that <laughs> we were stretching always... yeah it kind of had a snake twist element to it oh yeah I've been also doing that on the high barrel ah. like making up a weird um Something between the swan and the side sit-ups, there's like a snake in there. Oh, have you seen this archival? Elite? No, this or is this just this is... Lori Lottie's. So Lori Lottie's. Yeah, 100% Lori Lottie's. Lori Lottie's. Okay. <laughs> I love it. I'm training back from my snake on the reformer is kind of fake, you know. 
happy. You know what I mean? It's kind of external. So I'm trying to get a more internal thing going on. But isn't it nice that you can stand up for yourself, find your power back and do whatever it, you need to do Yeah. to find your snake again? And not feel yeah. like you stepped on someone's toes. You're, you're perhaps changing the work, but it's for your body, so that's fine. It's it's a yeah. A, I'm just a playing, playing, yeah. playing with the work for me, and it's and no one's watching, and I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm just doing it to reveal and make sense of the original exercise, which is very clear because I've studied it for so long and I'm not in danger of losing the standards or the intention or the intention like that's very clear what the totally. at least my understanding of my current understanding of the standards is pretty solid what would you say to wrap it up what would you say to someone who's just starting out in their Pilates journey, or to me, to anybody, what would you say to help them see why you do Pilates? Like, what is it about Pilates? Oh, I mean, someone just asked me this. Such a hard question to, or such a, an odd question to formulate into a question, but because people always say to me, why do you do Pilates? And then it's like 15 minutes later to half an hour and I finally I formulate yeah. what I want to say. But it's well, so much things. But can you come and do a little bite-sized something? Yeah, because somebody just asked me this. A new mm -hmm. client just asked me mm -hmm. this. And um, my quick answer is that it keeps me conditioned to do the things I want to do. Yeah. So for instance, I love to ride my bike and I live in kind of a hilly neighborhood. Mm. And so if I do my Pilates when cycling season is here, I can just get on and go. I don't have, you know, it's not a big deal because I've done my Pilates all along. So no matter what season of activity I want to do, even at my age, I can do it because Pilates is my on my baseline. Right. right. And I've also been at, not in a long time, but I have been on the floor in pain, my back, like seizing up. Mm. And I've been able to go from a 10, which is like call 911. Mm -hmm. Do zero pain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I've learned, I know myself through all my Pilates work. I know that when I'm in a state, I know my remedies and I know my steps to right. get myself out of pain and up and up and at them without needing um, outside help that I can really, I know myself. Right. right. That's amazing. Just the other day, a friend of mine that I was training with, she went into a spasm and had to step off the reformer because of something she did. You know, um, she kind of find a, kindly figured out what, what it was, but, you know, she had such a good calmness. She didn't freak out. Yes. Perfect. But she was just like a little taken back and I can too. I can get taken aback if something I'm doing in the room or whatever tweaks me. And, and I have to sort of sit with it, be calm and ask, okay, what's this about? Don't panic. Yep. You're smart enough. You're, you know, this um, Pilates, this intelligent movement exercise, we can work through this, perhaps keep it out of, like you say, if it's acute, of course, I'm going to go and get something of outside but usually I haven't had to and mm -hmm. she just calmly stepped off the reformer and did some other things and I think that's that comes with practice 
Yes. Because uh, a lot of my students are like, well, what should I do? And I'm just like, well, there's a lot of things to do, but this is going to take some time. And it just takes time. And we have more tricks in our bag as we practice more. Perfect. That's the best. The best thing is conveying that calm. Yeah. Of yeah. It, it's going to take time, but it's going to be okay. Yeah. Yeah. Huge teacher offering. Yeah, huge. Well, Lori, our time has come. Maybe we'll do a part two, part 3.0 on the chin wag of Chatter oh from my the gosh. Lottie's podcast. Where can people find you right now, Lori, on Instagram? What is your handle? It's my name, Lori Coleman Brown with no hyphen, one big word. Okay. That's... Um, that's My where you usually are. Are you Instagram? On are you on Facebook? I'm on Facebook well? too. I think it's the same. I think it's okay. just my name, one big word. Okay. And on Facebook uh, too. If people want to get to know Lori a bit more, workshops, taking some lessons, because you are doing online, you are doing yeah. virtual. Where would yeah. where do they go? They can contact me, Lori at Atlas Pilates dot com. and dot com. Okay. Um, Great. Well, yes. I really hope that um, you've enjoyed as much as I've enjoyed. And like I said, we need a, another chat or we just look, we have to stop now. We just have to. We just have to. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay. Yes. Anyway, Very thanks good. for sharing time with me, Lori. Oh, yes. Thank you so much, Carmen. Pleasure. Thank you for joining me today here on Chatter from the Center, a Pilates podcast where I have interesting conversations with Pilates enthusiasts like yourself and how we get to chat that Pilates is much more than a workout. Conversations with my guests continue after our chat and can be found on my Instagram at Align Pilates or in the comments section on YouTube. If you are a Pilates lover and enjoy these chats, subscribe to my YouTube channel Align Pilates and click on the notification bell for my next Chatter from the Center guest. Until then, keep moving and we'll chat next time.